Okay, everyone. <clears throat> What's up? Goldie here. Uh, and I'm going to be going over first look projections and ownership for week 11 here. Um, we've got kind of a weird split again. Uh, eight games in the morning, just three in the afternoon. Um, we're getting kind of to that point of the year. Uh, obviously in the winter, right, where we're going to have, um, you know, a lot of games trending to the downside in terms of totals, right? So um, we do have a couple of spots this week, at least, you know, compared to last week, we do have some, uh, you know, kind of middling totals in the middle, mid 40s, um, you know, not so many down near the, the low 40s that we're just like looking for extreme outlier performances. Um, but we, of course, do have uh, a couple in the, excuse me, in the upper 40s as well. Um, one kind of obvious spot at, uh, you know, pushing 50, even above 50. Um, and, you know, so I, I do think we, we've got a, a decent mix this week. Um, kind of some bad games, though. All, all around so uh, in that regard we might see a couple of these you know lower or mid 40s totals pop to the upside uh, which could offer some you know a little bit of value in terms of uh, projections and uh, and DFS right so um, let's uh, let's get into it uh, first game here we're just gonna try and go kind of quickly and again remember this is a first look um, We'll have, you know, kind of some noise still throughout the industry as um, industry type or uh, injury type stuff is is still kind of rolling in. Um, for example, we don't know if for sure Matt Stafford is going to play this week. Um, it it does look like Matt Ryan has has reclaimed his throne as a starter in in Indy. Um, you know, so. So there's that. We do think that uh, P.J. Walker, I believe, is going to be out for Carolina. It's going to be Baker. Um, so we, we've still got kind of some some noise a little bit, uh, certainly in the projections, but also in the ownership um, to yet flesh out over the next several days. Um, obviously, we've had some key news you know, come in for the Rams uh, and in – our first game here uh, Cooper Cup will be out so um, <clears throat> you know obviously that's a, a significant hit to you know, what is kind of what is left of, of the Rams offense right they've been pretty poor all season uh, really haven't been able to run the football um, one of the worst rushing offenses in the league and really their passing offense has only been buoyed by the uh, efficiency of, um, you know, the Matt Stafford and, and Cooper Cup combination. So, uh, and Matt Stafford really hasn't been all that great this season either. So, um, even down here at 5,500 against a kind of questionable defense over in New Orleans, um, without Cooper Cup, it makes him very, very difficult to play. And most of the industry, at least as of right now, is projecting him sub-15 points, um, kind of in aggregate. So that's a really tough spot to get to, despite you know what, what may seem like a, a kind of attractive price tag. Um, if you do want to get to him, I think um, you know the, the volume that Cooper Cup provides uh, every single week, you know, that's going to have to go somewhere, right? So we do still have Allen Robinson and Tyler Higbee here. Um, we'll have... You know, some of those targets will just naturally kind of spread out to a, a Van Jefferson or a Ben Skoranek. Um, I think Ben Skoranek has a little bit of upside here at, at 3,900. I'm not super excited about the price, but like I said, you know, Cooper Cup's getting 15 targets a game. That work has to go somewhere. So um, they're going to have to throw the football. And assuming that Matt Stafford is back and it's not um, Wolford or, or whoever – you know, the, the third guy was, I forget his name, um, that they, they mixed in there. Um, you know, they're going to have to throw the ball. So uh, these guys, Van Jefferson, Skoranek, certainly Allen Robinson, are going to get work. Um, I would like to focus on uh, pretty much just Allen Robinson and Tyler Higby, though. Um, Tyler Higby, I think, is a pretty decent price here, given the 
dramatic shift in um, yeah in in fundamentals of or fundamental buildup rather of of the Rams offense here. So at, at four thousand, um, you know I think that is a pretty decent price, and we're kind of seeing just about ten percent ownership on him this week. I think he's he's going to be um, you know he'll probably steam toward the end of the week, and we'll end up seeing him I would guess at twelve to fifteen percent probably in aggregate. Um, by the end of the week, but I do think this is a pretty good price at 4,000. Allen Robinson, I think, is going to be fine at 5,600. Um, as of right now, we're not seeing any ownership come in on these guys. So despite the fact that um, that Matt Stafford has not really been excellent this season, I, I do think we can sort of in one-off pieces, you know, get to some Allen Robinson, some Tyler Higbee. Uh, like I said, their their run offense, their rush offense has just been terrible all season long, and. Uh, New Orleans is a little bit gettable on the ground, um, but not terribly so. Uh, it's not uh, necessarily an, an outsized inefficiency or a weakness for them. So um, with a pretty bad and inefficient rush offense, I'm probably still just going to stay off of Darrell Henderson. So um, Rams defense here, 2,900, looks a little bit intriguing. Um, I think it's probably a bit too much for them. Um Given the the higher probability that their offense is even less likely to be able to move the football uh, efficiency or if efficiently now, um, the their defense is likely to be on the field a little bit more. So uh, they do have a decent defense, but um, even a 29 I mean, it's it's certainly playable, and you can you can keep them in the mix. Uh, on the other side, for New Orleans. Not super crazy about getting to a lot of, uh, at least at this juncture, a lot of New Orleans offensively. Uh, obviously, we can play Alvin Kamara. He's going to come in um, pretty popular, and he is projecting pretty well at 7,600. I think this is a, a really strong play at, uh, you know, the low 20s, upper teens sort of projection as of right now. Decent value play in the mid-40s here. Um, and the ownership, you know, as I mentioned, is is kind of, <clears throat> corroborating that. Uh, the other r popular piece, I guess, uh, in you know, from New Orleans here is going to be the Saints defense at 3,000. I think this is perfectly playable as well. Um, I think I would almost rather play the Saints than a, a $100 cheaper Rams on the other side, for example. Um, offensively, uh, Andy Dalton's really been struggling over the last couple of weeks, so I would not be all that surprised if we start to see a bit more Taysom Hill, um, spelling him a little bit more, it was kind of alluded to that a little bit last week. That doesn't mean that at 5,000 he's playable. Um, we also may see some Jameis come in at, uh, but he's 5,300, and he's also at least at this point not playable. So just keep that in mind if you're playing any Dalton. 5,300 still an attractive price tag, but he's projecting uh, just about the same as. Uh, Matt Stafford on the other side. So really not a ton of, I mean, there's value, but it's it's not uh, a whole lot of upside here for either of these teams getting some, you know, relatively uh, respectable defenses on the other side. So, so my favorite pieces here are going to be um, Kamara at 76, 6,800 for Chris Olave. Uh, he is the number one, right? He's still getting number one target share, but um, a little bit lower on him this week. As the price keeps climbing, and he does get a uh, a decent defense over in the Rams, so uh, probably the best place we want to focus is going to be Kamara here um, or the Saints defense. Would again stay off of Jarvis Lander at 4,500, uh, just a possession receiver, really most of his career, and all of the upside is is really kind of priced in here at 4,500. If he were at 3,500, then you could maybe talk about it, similar to a uh, Marquez Callaway, um, or even a Traquan down here at 41, but those guys aren't uh, projecting, at least at this moment early in the week, uh, to be providing any any value in that in that regard. So um, pretty much the main culprits here: Kamara, Olave, and again, mostly just one-offs. Really do like the the combination here, uh, correlation play of Kamara and the Saints defense. <clears throat> so moving on, we've got uh, Detroit and the Giants. This game is kind of one of the sneaky ones uh, where I think we may be able to 
find some value, obviously, because Detroit's defense is terrible, right? Um, they're really, really bad, and they give it up to everybody, um, including pretty poor offenses like the Chicago Bears. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I say poor offenses. They've been very, very good the last several weeks, but um, Detroit gives it up to in spades to everybody. So, um, again, we get a, another kind of offense here in the Giants that really mostly doesn't have a whole lot of upside, at least from the quarterback position. But uh, Detroit's probably going to allow him to score and, and move up and down the field pretty well. So naturally, as always, that means Detroit's offense is going to have value uh, as well. So we saw Amon Ross St. Brown um, had a decent week again last week. I think he's uh, a pretty good cash play anymore and because he's you know, really the main receiver um, of this offense. DeAndre Swift, again, hasn't gotten any work. Um a few carries and a couple of targets out of the backfield. Uh, it's Jamal Williams. He's number one as of now because, you know, it, it appears that DeAndre Swift is is still just hurt. So at 6,000, I think this is um, an all right spot for Jamal Williams here. Um, again, this is going to be, this is likely to be a, a faster paced game. This total sitting at about 47 right now, um, just under and with the Giants, at least a couple of days ago when I made my or when I checked the, the numbers last, uh, they were laying three. So um, expected to be a somewhat close game here. And again, the Giants main weakness, just like it was last week uh, when we targeted Damian Pierce uh, for Houston, it, it's going to be on the ground. So we want to attack them for the most part on the ground. They have an OK pass defense. But Amon Ross St. Brown and even Jared Goff here, you know, they can win matchups. So at uh, just 13% per ownership and 7,200, um, would like it if you were projecting a little bit better and a little bit cheaper, um, obviously. But, uh, you know, that's what we have to work with, 72 and, and just a middling sort of 17-ish projection from Amon Ra. Um, like I said, I think that's fine. And he can outperform that. That price tag and this projection, I think, uh, at, a, at a relatively decent clip. Um, Goff, again, he's he's playable as well. Uh, at 5400 it's still a, a pretty good price for him. But once again, similar to the quarterbacks in the last game, just projecting, you know, 15, 16 points or so. Um, you're going to need him to kind of pop a little bit. But decent value play and obviously a pretty good point per dollar play at, at very low ownership. So he's he's definitely playable again, uh, assuming that um, Detroit's going to be able to move the ball here. So uh, I would personally stay off the Lions defense. Really not sure why they're not the least expensive um, defense on the on, on the week, literally every single week. They are awful. Um, so at 2,700, I think this is probably too expensive. Now, on the other side, we do have Daniel Jones who uh, is not you know, the epitome of, um, of ball security <laughs> uh, when, we come to, when we talk about quarterbacks, right? So he can't turn the ball over, and I don't think it's horrific um, playing defense is just kind of in a general theory sense in high total games. Um, we don't necessarily need to be scared of that, but at 2,700 for the Lions, I think it's probably a bit too aggressive and something you might want to just fade. Um, Saquon, again, had an excellent week last week, and at 8,900, I still think the ownership is too low. Um, he's fine point per dollar and, and, a, and a good value play, and once again, at 8,900, that's kind of hard to do. So uh, they run all of the offense through him, and despite the fact that the Dimes will throw a – you know, he's going to throw the ball. He's not just going to hand it off every single down. Um, he'll chuck it a little bit to Darius Slayton, who got there last week, Wandale, who didn't do anything. Um, they're still spreading the ball around amongst about nine different <laughs> receivers down here, though. So really hard to get to a, a Giants passing attack because there's a lot of different spots it can go to. Um, that said, I do like him at, at 5,700. He's projecting very, very well here, uh, similar to what he did last week. And, you know, it's a really, really good point per dollar play and a very good value play at pretty, I, don't, I mean, it's elevated ownership for a quarterback, but 11% is 11%. It, it's not difficult to, to get different elsewhere. So that said, I think we can get to both Wandale and Darius Slayton. Um, and, of course, I if stacking the Giants at all, I would... Uh, 
pretty much never fade Saquon, or very, very rarely. Um, this is, once again, a, a killer spot for him, and he could get north of 30 touches uh, once again. So I think it's an excellent spot for Saquon, and um, as of now, coming in, I think, a little bit light on the ownership. So let's move on. Uh, Cleveland and Buffalo. Cleveland has been awful. Uh, they got blitzed last week by Miami. Um, and, you know, they were kind of off to a, a decent start. Drove right down the field and Brissett threw a touchdown pass, I believe, to Cameron Brait. Or, yeah, I, th- I think it was Brait. Um, whoever they whoever they used. Uh, maybe, maybe it was uh, DPJ. I forget. Anyway, um, there's still some upside that we can get to from the or the Cleveland passing game. I think this is going to be they're going to be trailing in this game. Um, yeah, but we have to be careful. This is Buffalo and this is Buffalo's defense. Now, despite the fact that they gave up a boatload of production to the Vikings last week, um, you know the Vikings' offense is not the Cleveland offense, or I I guess I should say that in reverse. Cleveland offense is not the Vikings' offense. So not near as much upside in the passing game. Um, Kirk Cousins, certainly a better passer than Jacoby Brissett. And Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen, along with Hawkinson, are certainly a better receiving core than Amari, DPJ, and Harrison Bryant. Um, I said Cameron Braid. I meant Harrison Bryant. Um, David Njoku, uh, he was out last week. Still not, not sure what, what we're going to see with him. Um, industry kind of undecided as of yet. I think Harrison Bryant down here at 3,100, he's gotten a price bump. Um, he's one of the one of these cheaper tight ends that you could mix in to to your player pool this week. Um, there's again, there's not a lot of upside, but he's gonna have to catch about four balls, five balls, and get into the end zone for you to to really realize um, any significant value for you. So it's it's a low probability play, but certainly one of the guys that you can throw in the mix um dpj at 46 he's his price is just still just kind of hovering in the mid fours here um think he's an okay add to your player pool uh, once again this week but uh, like i said this is buffalo's past defense and we've got to be a little bit careful because uh, it's an excellent unit over there amari at 64 um you know is it similar to dpj i'd almost rather just play dpj because he's 1800 cheaper right um on the ground, I don't really want anything to do with this at uh, 8,200 for Nick Chubb. Run defense for Buffalo, too uh, too good. And, and really, yeah, I think we can consider some Kareem Hunt pieces. Again, just in super deep tournament teams, 5,100. Price is high, but once again, they're likely to be trailing. And he's going to be, uh, a lot of the time, they're passing down back. Even though Nick Chubb is getting a little bit more work uh, in the passing game out of the backfield uh, as of late. So um, 2,300 for the Browns. The Vikings last week, they got there. Um, and it was kind of frustrating because they were mega chalk. And frankly, in general, I think a 2,300 defense or, or whatever against one of the best teams in football is bad chalk. But, um, you know, what do I know, right? So uh, 2,300 again. This defense is actually uh, significantly worse than the Vikings defense, I think, certainly on the ground. So um, that means we can get to some good Buffalo pieces and probably avoid the Browns defense. Um, I kind of have a sneaky suspicion that uh, we're going to see Buffalo come out and and try and blow the doors off of Cleveland this week. So you know they're uh, they're laying a big number. It uh, it opened I believe nine and a half and ten. Um, you know, I've got power ratings that say or suggest that Buffalo should be uh, even a couple of points higher than that. Um, now, we, we see some diminishing returns in the betting markets, you know, when you're laying over 10 points in the NFL. But, you know, that said, that doesn't mean that, that Cleveland really in any in any unit can compete with Buffalo. So um, having lost that game the way they did last week, uh, I would be... Uh, I think it's a pretty good spot to go right back to Buffalo. Um, Steph Diggs still sitting here at 8,300, and he's still sitting at about 16, 17% ownership. I think that's perfectly reasonable and respectable and easy to get to uh, in terms of a roster construction. Same thing with Devin Singletary. He um, he got there early and then kind of fizzled out, I guess, last week. Um, so he's seen a little bit of a price bump in response 
don't think it's bad to go back to Devin Singletary. Now, as last I checked, uh, I think we're going to have some serious weather concerns. Looks like there's going to be uh, some major, major snow coming through Buffalo this weekend. So keep an eye out for that. But once again, this is just kind of an early look. Um, if everybody were playing in a dome, you know, this is probably how the projections would flesh out. And I think at 5,810% ownership for Devin Singletary, I think that's another piece you can get to. 63, Gabe Davis, he got a price drop of 100 bucks. I um, think it's perfectly reasonable to play him also. Uh, not projecting, at least at this moment, uh, nearly as high as some of the other guys in the 6K as well. But he is the number two here over here. And Steph Diggs, he got, I think, 16 targets or something last week. So, um, you know, first and foremost, all of the offense is going to run through Steph Diggs, and he should be the main priority. Um, Dawson Knox, again, he's another one of these guys in the in the low 3Ks, tight ends that we can, we can add into the mix. Um, and he's probably he's going to project roughly the same to, to most everybody. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie is a e- really interesting play here. If we see Buffalo's offense kind of steam going into the end of the week, I think at 4,400, I think there's a really decent play. Uh, he's got some upside at this price. So um, now we do have to be careful in the in the running back room with Naeem Hines. Um, he did get a little bit of work. I think it was, you know, he, just a couple of touches. Um and very few snaps, but they also have James Cook over here as well. So um, something to keep in mind now that Naeem Hines is, is, you know, he's over there for a couple of weeks now. Um, so at 5,000, it doesn't mean you can play him or anything, but, you know, that, that would kind of take me off anything crazy if I got to it, like a 30% of a Singletary or something like that. Not to say that we should necessarily, but, um, you know, again, just something to keep in mind. So moving on, Carolina and uh, Baltimore, also a kind of a, a weird game. Um, this uh, this line in the betting market sitting pretty high, um, opened 11 and a half and 12. Uh, Baltimore laying it, obviously, uh, with just a total of uh, 44. And usually that suggests that there there could be some value on the dog you know, with a really, really high number and a, and a very low total. I mean, this is the NFL, and uh, despite teams being bad and a lot of teams having significant advantages uh, and being significantly better, this is still the NFL. And there's a lot of variance, and all defenses, even though they're they're bad, are, are still capable of keeping a number within 12 or, or 14 points or something. You know, so um, just something to to be aware of if we start to see – um, a number on Baltimore steam a little bit. There could be a little bit of value on Carolina on the other side. And where would that value come from if that were to happen? Um, well, it mostly come from DJ Moore and uh, Deontay Foreman, right? Um, as I said, PJ Walker's got a high ankle sprain, I believe, and he is very likely to be out. Now, some places clearly haven't adjusted just yet, so they're still projecting him. Um, but by all accounts and everything I've seen so far this week, uh, again, it is Wednesday, so things can change. Um, it is going to be Baker, and it'll probably be Darnold backing him up. Um, so all of the offensive value is still going to come from DJ Moore and Deontay Foreman. They're going to try and, and keep this game within reach and, and keep Lamar from getting uh, just running rampant on them. So uh, Terrace Marshall, he has emerged a little bit over the last several weeks and possibly another one of these guys in the low 4Ks that we could consider. Uh, Baltimore's defense is still attackable. Um, We just have to be careful with the Carolina passing game in general, especially if it's Baker, because he doesn't have a lot of upside as it is. Um, So we need to be aware of that. Deontay Foreman, over the last several weeks, they're just feeding him. And at 5,900, I think he's probably underpriced for the upside. Um, And... You know, Baltimore's run defense is actually, uh, I don't want to say super attackable, but um, it's, it's not necessarily a unit we want to go out of our way to avoid as it was in the you know years past. So something to keep in mind um, if we get kind of a cluster of, of 6K running backs again, Deontay Foreman is, is going to be one that you can certainly throw in the mix. As of now, not projecting super high because, you know, they're, they're huge, huge dogs here, um, and that generally doesn't fare well for the uh, running game. <clears throat> uh, LaVishka Chenault, 
3700 think this is still a playable price for him. He's not getting a lot of work, but uh, he does have upside, and he is kind of a you know, a low 4K, upper 3K guy that you can uh, mix into your deep tournament pools. Panthers defense, I wouldn't go near even 2200. I mean, they are 2200, and they're going to project pretty well um, as a you know point per dollar as a defense, and they're not going to be played. So, in the event that Carolina is able to keep this game a little bit closer than uh, the betting markets would suggest. Um, you know, the Panthers' defense could very well play a role in that. So, something to keep in mind. Um, other side, all of the offense is going to run through Lamar. Hopefully, we're going to see Mark Andrews back this week. If that's the case, it's those two. Um, but they do have Kenyon Drake here, who they've had to rely on over the last couple of weeks. They are coming off a bye. Um, and they, I believe they had New Orleans on a Monday night. It was their last outing. So, um, in which case, or in... in in that game, Kenny Drake kind of went off, right? So um, if it's the passing game here, I think you could see Lamar, Mark Andrews uh, pretty, pretty much go crazy. Um, really not all that jacked about getting to Devin Duvernay at 5,000. I think he's overpriced. And if Mark Andrews comes back, uh, Lamar is going to rely, you know, go straight back to him. And, and most of the work is going to go to, uh, to run through the tight end. So at 15%, 6,800, a little elevated, um, but I don't think it's bad because it's a, it's still a pretty good spot. Um, Kenyon Drake at 5,900. I think this is a pretty decent price as well. And and given that Baltimore's laying such a huge number here, I think this is a pretty good price, and he's not getting uh, any love whatsoever so far. So um, I think this is a another one of these 6K running backs that we could – potentially throw in the mix as of right now not projecting well so if this stays this low uh, you're probably getting, probably going to have a hard time getting to him uh, without forcing it Ravens defense 4,000 really really hard but again it you know they're going to get Baker and and Baker is highly volatile uh, in the backfield throwing the football so I think it's perfectly fine they may steam a little bit but their their price tag here is probably going to keep this ownership down and under 10 percent so Getting to uh, you know a decent bit of the Ravens, I think, is probably uh, going to be pretty okay uh, as we go into the weekend. So moving on quickly, uh, Philly, their undefeated run is over, um, and they got beat when they probably shouldn't have by Washington at home the other night. Um, they are on the road in Indy. And this is another game, you know, Indy coming off a, a pretty strong win. They were trailing into the fourth quarter, but uh, Jonathan Taylor finally showed up in his first week without Naeem Hines. And the Indy defense, you know, they kept them in that game. Um, they did give up 20-some-odd points or whatever, but, um, you know, they... they ensure that it didn't get out of hand. And, you know, that's really the only reason that Indy was able to capitalize, um, you know, on the Raiders' defense. Obviously, the Raiders' defense is bad. But um, so Philly now, I think they're going to be uh, in the same sort of uh, boat as Buffalo up here, right? Um, they probably shouldn't have lost a game that they did. And this is still a really, really good team one of the best in the NFC, and they're likely to come out uh, firing on all cylinders. Or we're going to try to. So I think Indy um, is likely to have a little bit of an issue this week, um, and they could very well just run into a buzzsaw. Now, Philly is laying, I believe, seven. That's where the number opened uh, on the road. And generally, you want to kind of be careful in attacking offenses that are, are just laying huge numbers on the road. Because as I said, this is the NFL, and a lot of crazy things can happen. Um, and Indy's defense is not the worst in the world. So uh, we did see that Philly is a little bit vulnerable, and they can um, you know, shit the bed a little bit against a team that they should beat. So um, just something to, to be aware of. But as of now... Um, projections wise obviously Jalen Hurts and AJ Brown even Devonte Smith they're all going to project really really well value wise and ownership wise are coming in all sub 10%. So I think this is a pretty good spot in DFS. You know just because they're laying 7 and you 
a lot of times want to avoid that in the markets doesn't mean that there's not going to be fantasy points to be scored. So we can certainly still attack that in DFS. AJ Brown at 8,000, kind of getting a little uh, a little hard to get to here, but um, and same thing with Devontae Smith at 6,200 because they're still using Dallas Goddard a lot. Now it looks like Dallas Goddard is out. I didn't even see news on him. Um, not sure if it was a concussion or something like that, but uh, um, yeah, it, it does look like he's going to be out. So um, check on that. We'll you know we'll probably do a review later on in the week, uh, Bobby and I, and and we'll have you know we'll kind of do our own research as well and and have more news on that. So um, you know that said. Jack Stoll, I guess, is is going to be the number one tight end. Um, who knows? That that could very well be, you know, a super cheap piece that you could add into the mix here uh, and and make the Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown stacks a little bit cheaper for you. Um, Miles Sanders, sixty nine hundred. I think that's it's probably just too expensive and really not projecting all that well. Sub two points per dollar and. Um, under 30 value score here. So against a decent run defense, probably something that we're going to want to just stay off of at that price tag. Uh, Eagles D at 3,900. Again, one of these really expensive defenses that could be okay. The Colts offense on the other side with Matt Ryan back at the helm. um, Well, they weren't very good really all season. They couldn't run the ball, couldn't throw the ball. And Matt Ryan really wasn't very good. So I do think the, there's a little bit of hidden value at, at 3,900 for the Eagles defense. And they're another that you could potentially get a little bit contrarian with, similar to Baltimore's defense uh, in, or, or Buffalo's defense, in that uh, you could pay up a little bit and to get some reduced ownership. And I think that's a fine play, um, if you can make it happen. Favorites here would have to just be uh, Hertz, Brown, and Devontae Smith, you know, kind of the main guys. You've got to think that uh, with the loss of Dallas Goddard, most of the passing game targets are just going to funnel back to A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, which would make Devontae Smith at 6,200 look like a really, really good play. Um, so we'll keep an eye on how things develop through the week, but as of now, the ownership on Philly looks pretty strong for DFS. Um so, circling around to the other side, JT, as I mentioned, had a pretty good week last week. 14% ownership at, at 7,800 against Philly this week is probably going to be a little stiff, um, something we want to keep an eye on. But once again, he was on the field for, I believe, every passing down last week. Uh, and when Naeem Hines was around, that wasn't the case, right? So, um, if that is the case, that, that just means J- JT's on the field. And... He's going to be their best athlete, he and Michael Pittman. And Matt Ryan could very well be Matt Ryan at this stage of his career and just dump the ball off to JT and, and just kind of, you know, let the athletes do do what they do here. So um, something to keep in mind, 7,800 prices coming up from, I believe, 75 last week. Seems okay still and, and value-wise still projecting just fine. 5,200 for Matt Ryan. I think this... This offense is, is likely to be trailing again, so they're probably going to go back to their pass-heavy ways. And at 5,200, it's probably okay. Um, still just projecting in the mid-15s, give or take. And, you know, that naturally lends a quarterback score and point per dollar in value to be a little bit more elevated. So you're going to see some low ownership on him, and it's not unheard of that he can get to a Michael Pittman or, or a, an Alec Pierce here, even some Paris Campbell, um, in the passing game, it's a cheaper stack, and if you want to add in some Steph Diggs uh, or even play JT with a Matt Ryan stack, it's probably not the worst thing in the world. But uh, once again, something we want to keep in mind: uh, they're likely to be trailing, and they could very well just get run out of the building in in this game. Uh, 3,900 Alec Pierce, I think, is is a, a decent play. We saw it before Matt Ryan got yanked. Alec Pierce kind of had a, a a breakout game, I believe it was on primetime. So something to keep in mind with him at 3,900. I think that's a, a decent, um, you know, 
price point to get to and uh, at, at very low ownership think that's fine uh, do really like Michael Pittman however 6100 we saw the the early season work that he got with Matt Ryan back there and um, it was pretty substantial so he's projecting pretty well for a low 6k's receiver at 15 points and I think that's uh, you know the, the ownership kind of following at, at 12% so far that's a, a pretty decent point per dollar and value play and something we can we can definitely keep in the mix. Um, perhaps just as, as single plays, you know, a singleton kind of one-off Michael Pittman, I um, think that's fine, or use him as a run back in some Philly stacks. I think that's fine as well. Okay, so now to the um, big kind of orange and black elephant in the room. Uh, here's Justin Fields again, breaking slates, and who knows if he's going to do it. I mean, but... Man, do I sure look like an idiot, right? Um, but here he is again, 7600 for Fields now. This is uh, a $2,200 price bump in the last two weeks. And, I mean, do we, once again last week, they only threw the ball, I think, 18, 20 times. Um, or do we really think that he, as a quarterback, is going to be able to rush for 150 yards a game? I mean, maybe, maybe, but... Uh, you know, we, we got to start being careful with this as the price tag is elevated. You know, that said, he's been very, very good. And once again, um, point per dollar and value-wise projecting very, very well. So um, high standard deviation in the ownership as of right now. So we're seeing a little bit of volatility in that number come through. But uh, once again, it's pretty early in the week. So that will flesh out um, as we get closer toward the weekend, but 13% ownership. Again, it's a fine number to get to for a quarterback. You can get it, get different elsewhere, but um, now it's just kind of, I mean, you're almost forced a lot of the time to play fields naked. And as Cole Komet is starting to see some, some elevation in the price tag, Darnell Mooney's price is starting to creep up a little bit. Chase Claypool is still at 4,800, but, um, you know, he's going to end up dragging up the, the price tags of all of these guys. And um, despite the fact that Chicago's offense has been very, very good, I believe they're the highest scoring offense over the last like month uh, in the NFL, we still have to be careful that they just don't throw the football enough. And throwing it 20 times a game when you're paying the same prices as, as um, you know, other pass catchers in, in other games, they're just far more likely to get more volume. So we have to be aware of that. Um, and, you know, call me crazy, but Justin Fields isn't going to run for 150 yards every single game of his career. So um, doesn't mean we have, we fade him or anything like that. But, again, well, once again, something to keep in mind. They get Atlanta this week, whose offense, excuse me, whose defense has been terrible um, pretty much all season. They're very, very attackable. And, actually, they're pretty attackable in the passing game. So that said, despite the trepidations a little bit um, that I personally have with Fields, I think you can play him again. Um, but again, you know, I wouldn't be coming in well over the field once again, and I may very well look like an idiot once again uh, as we do this next week. But I think Cole Komet now has had uh, a couple of weeks here with um, – you know, with some touchdown equity this last week, I believe he broke one for 60 some odd yards or something. So there's some noise, underlying noise in, in the actual performance and probabilities that these guys can continue their sort of torrid pace in putting up points and putting up fantasy points for us every week. So um, Chase Claypool, like I said, at 4,800, his price hasn't moved. And both he and, and Darnell Mooney are still playable at 5,400, 4,800 respectively, or I guess 48, 54 respectively. Uh, at low ownership, again, they're they're perfectly fine pieces to mix in. Once again, if they're only throwing the football 20 times a game, you've got to kind of hit, and um, you know, so that that's risk that you you take when you're playing the Chicago offense. Uh, Bears defense, however, 2,600 looks interesting here uh as i kind of alluded to before it's not something that we should necessarily shy away from playing a a cheap defense in a total uh or in a game whose total is pretty high and this one is pushing 50 right so um we are expecting to see points here but it's not out of the realm of possibility that the bears defense could turn marcus Mariota into a turnover machine so 
That said, on the other side, I do really like Mariota here at 5,500. He is going to push, excuse me, value and point per dollar plays to be uh, one of the best on the week. And at 55, it's a really, really strong play. Projecting in the upper teens here, and that's kind of the uh, the delta that we want to see. Price in the lower fives, projection for a quarterback in the upper teens. So where's the volume going to go? Uh, well, hopefully it goes to Kyle Pitts, but, I mean, who knows. But um, Drake London, it's certainly going to go to a little bit. <clears throat> and this is kind of a, a standard projection for, for Drake, uh, kind of in the you know low teens, give or take. And ownership right around, you know, 5 to 10 percent somewhere in that area every every week and I think that's um that's fine this week again Chicago's defense uh it has been giving up points too you know their their offense has been scoring but their defense has given it up in spades as well so and they really have been all season so let's not forget that in Atlanta here can score they've got a they can move the ball they're they're pretty balanced they've got Corderell back here in the backfield and you know they've got a couple of pass catchers with Drake London and Kyle Pitts here, and even some Oli Zacchaeus. You know, they, they have a capable wide receiver core. Uh, they've even been mixing in a little bit of Demir Bird um, that Mariota can use. Capable receiver core. So it's at this ownership, sub 10% for pretty much all of them. I think they're all very, very playable. Cordero Patterson, 6,200, really, really like this. I play him pretty much every week at very low ownership. Um, and same thing with Kyle Pitts. He's another one of these. He's going to rival, rival Tyler Higby probably uh, for one of the chalkier tight ends as we move into the weekend. Um, obviously along with Mark Andrews, but um, still a pretty decent play here at 4,400 and it's sub 10% as of right now. I think this is a, a fine number to get to. Falcons defense, 3,300. Um, probably something we're going to want to avoid. They're, they're pretty susceptible. And like I said, you know, Chicago's offense, they may very well have just figured figured all of it out. Uh, just let Justin Fields run the football and, um, you know, nobody knows how to deal with it. So something to be very careful with with a, uh, a defense in the in the low to, to mid 3Ks here. Uh, low ownership, and if we are sus- expecting some hard regression, for fields, then Falcons defense could very well be a part of that. So something to keep in mind as an angle to play this game. Uh, okay, moving on. Let's see if we can. I've been kind of yapping quite hard here, but again, I think early in the week it's it's decent to get a a good idea as to where we stand with all of these teams and all these players. Jets New England. This could this could be a pretty boring game. I think. Um, Two pretty good defenses here and two pretty mediocre slash bad offenses. Um, This total is sitting, I mean, it opened 38 and a half. May have seen a little bit of play to the upside, but I I mean, no matter how you slice it, it's not going to be much, right? So Zach Wilson here at a stone 5,000. Second year quarterback going into New England in mid-November is not really something I'm interested in in Probably not a place you've been able to make money, really, in the last decade. So um, that said, you know, 5,000 point per dollar and and value wise, you know, those are pretty good numbers. But the the average projection here, the aggregate projection, is uh, under 15 points, and that's just not going to cut it for Zach Wilson. So that really makes it very hard to get to anybody in the passing game. Garrett Wilson, um, and even Tyler Conklin here. They're I mean, I think their prices, the, the upside, given the um, lack of productivity from Zach Wilson, is the upside for these couple of guys is kind of priced in. Same thing with Corey Davis here down at 4,200. Just not a lot of volume for for these guys in the passing game. Um, Michael Carter is going to have uh, James Robinson probably getting a bit more work with him um, coming into this week. I believe the Jets are coming off a bye, uh, having beaten Buffalo two weeks ago. Uh, it could be misremembering this but uh, nevertheless Jets have a pretty good defense and that's kind of their MO they want to rely on the run game and the defense because they've got some holes here with Zach Wilson so 2800 for the Jets 
I think is a pretty decent play at pretty low ownership right now. And they're projecting for a defense, you know, two and a half points per dollar and about 20s in the, the value range for a defense. Pretty, you know, pretty respectable. So at 2,800, I think that's a, a pretty decent play. Kind of a sneaky seven point aggregate projection. Uh, do you think in in New England in the cold middle of November, there's a little bit of upside here? Because let's not forget, this is, this unit right here for the Jets is the only reason that they won that game against Buffalo. So um, really nothing for the offense for me or from the offense for me from the Jets. Uh, if anybody, oof, I don't know. Eh. Yeah, I, I really am not crazy about it in any of these prices here. So uh, on the other side with New England, um, Ramondre Stevenson you know, seeing some pretty heavy ownership again, as is kind of normal for him now. Um, same thing with New England's offense. They just want to run the football. They've got some questions there with Mac Jones uh, and throwing the football. He's not been excellent. Um, and the Jets defense here, I'm not sure we want to be attacking necessarily. So uh, even at 5,100 for Mac Jones, still just a mid mid-teens kind of projection that'll naturally lend itself uh, once again to a good point per dollar and, and decent value play. And that's just because they're so cheap um, and their quarterbacks are for the most part, highly projectable. So where would the volume go? If we're going to play some Mac Jones where it's going to go to Jacoby Myers, a little bit of Devonte Parker. Don't think this is bad. I think he's at 4,100. One of the, um, one of the cheaper pieces that you could add into the mix, but be aware he's not going to project well pretty much ever. So it's just kind of a, a deep tournament play. Most of the volume is going to go to Jacoby Myers. 5,500, I think that's all right. Uh, Projection-wise, this is not going to lend itself necessarily to a, a very strong value play. So um, once again, just a rush-heavy offense that we probably want to get to. I, I think getting to some Ramondre is okay. 6700 however, is an elevated price tag against a pretty good run defense. So something to be aware of. But industry as of right now is is pretty high on him at an 18-point projection. It's a good number for a running back, of course. Good value score here. And the ownership is is kind of corroborating all of that. So um, ownership number does look a little bit high at that price tag in this matchup, but, you know, not a bad play by any means. Uh, Patriots defense here, 3,700. I think this is playable as well. Uh, one of these, another one of these more expensive defenses and a low total game that get a, you know, a pretty bad offense on the other side. So I think this is playable. If you want to run some correlation, Stevenson and Patriots defense, I think that's perfectly fine. Okay, moving on. Um, see if we can blast through these last four games quickly. Uh, Washington at Houston. Washington coming off their big win against Philly. Um, they're really finally starting to use Terry McLaurin in the passing game. It's back-to-back -back weeks now where he's gotten a lot of work and he's performed. And it's almost just like, hey, if they throw their best athlete to football, then, you know, who knows? Like, he may perform. Kind of surprising, eh? So, uh, 5900 I think this is a perfectly playable price for him again. Um Carson Wentz, I mean, he's still out as far as I know. So it's the it's the Taylor Heineke show, and he's been fine. Uh, he's another one of these low 5Ks that I think you could potentially get to. Houston's offense or his defense is bad, and their offense uh, isn't going to score any points for him either. So um, I think that lends to a little bit of uh, upside for the Washington offense here in what would otherwise be a kind of a boring game that you'd you know, most likely want to ignore. I mean, the total is very, very low in this game, but sitting at 40 and a half, 41, give or take, Washington is laying points here on the road against Houston. So um, I don't think it's terrible if we try and get to some Washington pieces, very unknown and kind of ignored across the market uh, coming into you know, the early parts of the week. So 11% uh, ownership for Terry McLaurin. I don't think it's too high. I would probably come in over this number if I had to choose and make teams right now. Um, even at 5,900, which is generally an elevated price tag for him when he's got some overall pretty low upside quarterback play with Taylor Heineke and Carson Wentz, right? But um, they've been throwing it to him and, you know, the, the guy can really uh, make that number work for you. So there's there's hidden upside that is not priced in here. Um, 
Brian Robinson, Antonio Gibson heading up the backfield here. Um, I think if we're wanting, if we want to attack Houston, we most often want to do it on the ground, just like we saw last week with Saquon um, and just going crazy. They gave him, what, 32 touches or something crazy. I think you could see a lot of really, really high upside here for Brian Robinson and even a little bit for Antonio Gibson. I think they're probably not going to need to use Gibson in the passing game all that much, but uh, Brian Robinson, he wants, you know, like they want to run all of the, the rushing attempts through him. So at 5,300, I think this is a really, really good tournament play. Um, I might, I'm pretty hesitant to say that you could play him in cash, but this is a really, really good price. And it's a really good spot um, against one of the worst rush defenses in football. So, um, if you want to stay off of the passing game, I think Brian Robinson here, 5,300, 5% ownership is really, really strong. Um, Commander's defense, 3,100. Yeah, sure, you could play it. Another one of these kind of weird correlation pieces. Uh, Brian Robinson and the Commanders. Um, probably not my favorite since their price tag is a little bit more elevated, but uh, the offense on the other side for Houston, they just don't have any upside whatsoever. Uh, now, Davis Mills did chuck it. And he threw for over 300 yards, I think, in his last outing. Uh, but they're still not throwing it all that much. And they're still spreading it around, right? Nico got a little bit, but Brandon Cooks didn't do anything. Um, he was a, what I thought was a really good play at, I think, 5,300 last week. Um, but it's starting to emerge that Brandon Cooks wants out of Houston. And I don't think he, he's all that motivated to be playing right now. So... You know, that, that said, you know, that's narrative. And as of right now, what the projections and the ownership are saying, um, I mean, if if you want to say that they're kind of corroborating that narrative, I mean, sure. But uh, no matter how you slice it, he's 5,400. He's only projecting for about 12 and a half points here. So not great overall, not good point per dollar, not great value. Um, so from the Houston passing game, it's just really, really hard to get to. Nico Collins, though, did show last week that, you know, they can use him or they will try and use him a little bit, especially if they're trailing. They might be in this game, but again, we got to be careful of the total here. Um, this game isn't a dome, so we're not going to have to worry about weather or anything, but we, we do have to worry about kind of you know, a very low upside offense that really wants to just run the football. Um, Damian Pierce on the other side, or I guess in the, in the backfield, that is 6,500. I think this is fine as well. He's going to come in popular once again. But, um, you know, also still have to be careful that this is just a, a pretty poor offense and they've been really struggling to move the football. But strong projection so far, good value play, high ownership. Um, don't think coming in at a full 20% is probably warranted this week. It looks like there's, you know, just kind of talking through it so far, there's some other spots that we could probably get to um, to get off of some of this ownership at a, maybe some cheaper price tags. But it's not terrible by any means because he's going to get volume. So, um, and Washington is just kind of a, a middling defense overall. So, um, that's probably the best way to attack it, I would think. Damian Pierce in some, you know, some hefty ownership here. Uh, maybe some Nico Collins at a cheap price tag. Brandon Cooks though at 5400. I mean, it's it's okay. You can play him, um, but I think it's at this point less of a cash play as it was earlier in the season and more of a tournament and higher volatility play. 2,400 for the Texans defense. Um, this unit kind of keeps them in the game despite being really, really bad against the run. So at 2,400, don't think this is awful. At mid-sixes projection, it's once again these kind of mid-two-and-a-half point per dollar and 20-ish value plays for a defense, and they're cheap, you know, that it makes them playable. All right, moving on to the afternoon games, Vegas and Denver. Um, man, I feel like a bunch of different things could happen in this game. Um, we could either see about 11 points scored and 76 yards of total offense between the two offenses, or we could see about 111 points scored since Vegas' defense is so bad. Um, so... We'll start with the Raiders. Uh, they have just been awful and underperforming all season. Uh, the market, I think, is finally coming around and not favoring the Raiders by 
five and six points on the road and, or any of that garbage. Um, I think they were laying five points against the Saints when they got shut out. <laughs> so, um, and that was really only, what, three weeks ago. So the, the market pretty much all season has been very, very high in Vegas. Um, and, I mean, for good reason. They've got a lot of talent here, Devontae, Josh Jacobs. Um, of course, they've lost it two of their receiving core in Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller. Um, but Matt Collins has basically been just as good as Hunter Renfro pretty much all season. Um, so that's kind of a wash. Foster Moreau, certainly a downgrade from Darren Waller, but um, really what it is is the offense just hasn't been able to do anything outside of Josh Jacobs. He's been the only bright spot. Of course, Devontae, he can he can tear apart anybody. Uh, you can play him at 8,700 once again. You can play him every single week um, in pretty much any matchup. It doesn't really matter. That said, Denver's pass defense, uh, pretty good. They're a little more susceptible on the ground, um, despite being you know, a, a really, really good defense. And I think I saw a stat earlier this week. If Denver's offense could have scored 18 points, that's it. it. Just 18 points in every single game this season, they would be undefeated. And that's because their defense is so, so good. So where they're most attackable, like I said, is on the ground. Josh Jacobs at 20%. This looks a little bit stiff at this price tag. Um, I think he's probably should be in about 12 to 15% ownership range, just kind of on a weekly basis, uh, given how bad this team really is. Um and in this particular matchup, they're going to have difficulty throwing the football a little bit more, despite Josh Jacobs having torn apart Denver earlier in the season. And that was really kind of his breakout game. So um, there's still upside for him. And at 7,500, I think he's probably, I, don't, I hesitate to even call him a cash play at this price. Um, and But at this ownership, that means you could probably get away with it. And, and the spot, I think, is okay enough that you could probably get away with it. I just balk a little bit at the price tag. Um, the offense, just in general, has difficulty moving the football, and they're, they're just not very efficient. So that uh, certainly affects his probabilistic upside, right? So um, Derek Carr here, 5,600. I'm just not touching him. Um, projecting okay, kind of sneaky high number or sneaky – you know, number that a number that wants to like kind of punch a little bit higher. Um, decent point per dollar and decent value here, but once again, he's missing some of his receiving core, and a lot of this is just going to funnel to Devontae Adams. So I think the favorite way to play this game uh, certainly wouldn't be the Raiders' defense. I mean, you, although you could play them, Denver's offense has been awful. Um, you know, another one of these teams, mid point per dollar, you know. Value-wise, not great because it's got a, a they've got a little bit lower projection, but uh, not unplayable by by any means. On the other side, um, the reason I don't want to play Derek Carr is really the only spot he's going to be able to do or throw the football to is um, is Devonte Adams, and you know which is one maybe two outlets. Um, they're probably going to have a hard time, you know, putting up putting up some points here. So um, Vegas's defense it has just been so so bad. Uh, they've been on the field a lot because their offense can't move the ball. So um, that said, once again, I think there's upside here for for Denver's offense, and I, I say this every week. And I guess the moment that I jump off, then um, you know everybody jump on. But um, you know, once again. Yeah, you know, they're they're trying to throw the football. Dulcich busted last week. Uh, he got a, five targets, I think, and Russ overthrew him like four or five times. You know what I mean? It's like, so it was kind of a frustrating week for them all all around. Jerry Judy, um, he twisted an ankle. I believe he's got a high ankle sprain. Um, he was supposed to have an MRI earlier this week, and I haven't seen any results of that. Uh, personally just yet. So keep an eye on that. He may, may very well be out, um, in which case Kendall Hinton, he got a lot of work this last week. Um, he's going to be the number three. K.J. Hamler is also possible. Um, Lat Murray, Melvin Gordon has basically played himself out of a job here because the guy can't hold on to the football. Um, he nearly fumbled again last week. It, 
it he was just lucky and that he hit the ground and he was down. Uh, but the ball popped out, and after which they they still didn't give a lot of the uh, running game work uh, to him. He was used more in the passing game, uh, which means at 5,700, he's just totally unplayable. Uh, Lat Murray did get more carries, and Vegas' defense here is bad, so I think that you could consider some, some Latavius Murray at 5,000 uh, in some deeper tournament teams. Um, but really, it's the passing game is where they're most attackable, the, the Raiders. And once again, that's Russ, that's Cortland Sutton, it's Greg Dulcich. Um, in addition to, you know, the, the tertiary pieces here, sort of Kendall Hinton and KJ Hamler. Um, you got to be careful of Chase Edmonds in the backfield. They're getting him a little bit more work. And that's why Melvin Gordon at 57 is just totally unplayable. Um, because Chase Edmonds, like if Melvin Gordon fumbles, he could very well just not see the field again. So, um, my favorite one of the running backs would be Latavius, and but the the a preferred way, at least for me at this moment, to attack Vegas would be with Denver's passing game. Russ at 58 is a good play again, point per dollar and value, um, in very low ownership. Their offense has just been terrible, but you know you you can still play them. Um, and Cortland Sutton, 6,000, he actually got a a $400 price bump, which kind of stinks. Um, really wish that hadn't happened, but, uh, Dulcich burned a lot of people last week. So I think you can go right back to him. Another one of these low 4k, 3k kind of tight ends that you can just throw in the mix. This is more in line with where his ownership should be on a, on a weekly basis though, at, at about 10%. Um, Broncos 3,500 think they're fine as well. Uh, probably a little bit expensive, but this is a good unit over here. So, um, they're, they're definitely playable as a more expensive defense that you can get to as well. Um, okay, quickly been talking for quite some time sorry it's so long again guys but um here we go dallas minnesota um so tony pollard and it was the tony pollard and zeke lamb or cd lamb show last week man they both of them just went off when zeke was announced out i think i thought tony pollard was a really really good play and um you know this week the run game is actually not how we want to be attacking with Dallas. Um, Green Bay has a very weak run defense, and unfortunately, we don't get them on the main slate. Uh, we get them on Thursday night, so um, at least with Tennessee. So Minnesota's run defense, however, is kind of in stark contrast to Green Bay's in that they're they're very very good against against the run, um, and where they're most vulnerable, they've got I think a bottom five um, adjusted yard for attempt passing defense in the league this year. So that lends some upside to Dallas's passing game here. And once again, it would be CD lamb 7,500. I think this is a pretty decent play again. Um, and point per dollar and value wise, he's projecting pretty well, 17% ownership starting to get a little elevated. So, you know, the market is even in the early part of the week here, uh, pretty high on CD coming into this matchup. So if we want to hedge that a little bit and play some DAC as well, um, you can play him with some Michael Gallup. You know, Michael Gallup has always been their deeper threat down the field at 5,100. Solid number two workload here. And at five, sub 5% ownership, I think this is a fine way to attack this game. If you want to stack all three of them, I think that's okay. If you want to mix in a Noah Brown even at 3,700, I don't think that's bad either. Um, another one of these kind of low 4K, upper 3K wide receiver pieces that you can throw into the mix. Um, Cowboys defense 3,200, probably something I want to avoid. Um, there's a high total in this game, and an elevated price tag in a defense and a high total is something I usually want to stay away from. But um, really what's weird about this game is Dallas is laying points somehow. Um I am I'm not sure at all how you make them the favorite in this game. There's a significant advantage that they have in the passing game, but it it struck me as very very odd. Dallas was laying upwards of of two and two and a half um, on the openers, and it, like that just seemed like an out out of control number uh, to me when I was making my line. So um, I certainly did make Minnesota the favorite. And there could be, in the betting markets at least, a couple points of value on Minnesota. So where is it going to come from in DFS? Well, 
I mean, the usual suspects, right? We have Justin Jefferson here who just went to town last week against the Bills. He can win any single matchup and every single matchup, and it doesn't matter who he gets. Dallas's pass defense is very, very good, but this is Justin Jefferson. He's a top three receiver in football, and he can he can win every single week. It, it doesn't really matter. Once again, though, 9,100, you know, guys above at volatile positions, guys above 9,000, they're still kind of hard to get to, but, um, you know, playing him at 15% ownership, I think is perfectly fine. 6,100, once again, for Kirk Cousins, also, you know, still a playable price. Um, now, Dallas is a little bit more attackable on the ground. We did see Dalvin uh, bust uh, or bust out last week, rather, when he cracked a 72-yard or 70-something yard um, run for a touchdown. 8,000 price is still a little elevated given his uh, production this season, but I think this is a pretty good spot. Um to perhaps run some Dallas passing game with some Dalvin Cook on the run back or something like that. Um, TJ Hawkinson, once again, got a boatload of targets. Adam Thielen, just kind of the third option in the offense now. So I think there's a little bit of, an, a, of a divergence here in Adam's, Adam Thielen's price versus TJ Hawkinson's. Um, and Dallas has historically, you know, over the last several years, been attackable most via the tight end so uh they're throwing him the ball more and at 5300 still think this is an okay and, and a playable price for hawkinson vikings defense still cheap and still playable um not i don't think it's the the greatest spot but if they are to win this game something like a dalvin cook and a vikings correlation uh or something like that or even a hawkinson um in a vikings or Justin Jefferson and a Viking. You can play these kind of pieces together, even though the correlations aren't necessarily outsized. So, um, like getting to this game with Dallas passing game, some Minnesota run game, but you can certainly play Justin Jefferson and Hawkinson as well. Uh, okay, last game of the day, uh, Cincinnati at Pittsburgh. Uh, this is a really, really good spot for Cincinnati's passing game. Um, Joe Mixon, they're like they're coming off a bye, and Joe Mixon's five touchdown game. Can't really expect that to happen again, of course. Uh, 7400 I think this is still a playable price for him, however. Um, and with Jamar Chase out, it's very likely, like we saw what they did, they used him heavily, heavily, heavily in that game, and that's why he scored so much. Uh, obviously, it's a it's a, a variant performance, but, um, you know, and we can't expect 58 points from him every week, but we don't need 58 points from him. Uh, you need 25 at this price, and he has upside for 35, for sure. So uh, it's definitely still playable at, at 7,400. The ownership um, at 17% is probably a little bit high, given the advantage that Cincinnati has in the passing game here. Joe Burrow at 6,800. Uh, it's a little aggressive, but that's going to keep his his ownership down. Um, you know, good projection for him so far. Good point per dollar, good value play. Uh, T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd, their prices are elevated. I really wish they were a little bit cheaper here. But um, this is still certainly playable. And like I said, their their biggest advantage in this game is going to be in the passing game through the air against Pittsburgh's defense without Minka Fitzpatrick. So um, I think you can play both T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. I think they're really, really good plays. Really not a lot of ownership coming to either of them. Uh, certainly less coming to Tyler Boyd in the slot. 6500 a little elevated price tag for him, for sure, but uh, not a bad play by any means. Um, I think you can play the Bengals' defense as well. Another one of these kind of mid-to-upper $3,000 defenses that are in a pretty decent spot against kind of a bad team. Uh, they're laying 5 and 6 going into Pittsburgh right now. Um, I made the number slightly higher, but really no kind of gripe with that. So... Uh, I really do expect Cincinnati to perform very well here coming off a of bye. Um, on the other side, for Pittsburgh, um, man, Najee almost got there last week. <laughs> and that was really kind of frustrating. He had a good first quarter, good first half. I think he ended up with 99 yards, but he got vultured on two touchdowns, one by Deontay Johnson for from one yard out, and I think the other by George Pickens from one yard out. Um or maybe Pickett ran one in or something like that. Uh, so that was kind of frustrating. But it's good that he didn't get there because his price didn't go anywhere. At 5500 he's still very, very playable in this spot. And 
I I think you can play him again. Um, they're not using him once again quite as much as they need to. Uh, they should be using him more in the passing game and in the dump off game. Um, because he's a, he's a capable pass catcher for sure. But they're just not using him just yet. So, uh, keep that in mind. But at 5,500, the price is still pretty good. And they're likely to be trailing in this game. Um, so we could see some more pace out of the Pittsburgh offense. And you could see a little bit more production uh, kind of in all facets from Deontay Johnson, Pat Fryermuth, and Najee and Pickens. So um, Steelers defense, I'm not touching. 2,300, they're, they're going to steam a little bit. I'm really not sure why. But uh, because I think they're going to kind of get beat up pretty good. But as we saw last week with the Vikings defense, just because the, the team is in a bad spot, um, you know, doesn't mean that they can't turn somebody over for a touchdown or, or something like that and get four or five sacks and, and kind of get there with 12 points or whatever for you. So um, it's playable mid sixes projection and good point per dollar play for a defense, uh, low twenties value. Uh, I, I think it's fine if they start to steam, uh, I would probably cap them at 10%, but 2,300, you know, it's not bad. So favorite way to play this year, I'm, I'm staying off picket. Um, still just don't think he's ready, but still, once again, 16, you know, mid-teens projection and a decent point per dollar and value play here. Um, they're just going to need to throw the football more for me before I jump on board. 5,800 for Deontay, I think it's just too expensive for him. And same thing with George Pickens at 52. I think... Yeah, they are going to be trailing, so you should, like I said, you should see a little bit of an uptick in volume. Um, same thing with Pat Fryermuth at 4,200. Should see an uptick for all of these guys, but um, you know, just kind of be careful that they could very well get blitzed here. I, and that's kind of how I lean. So my favorite way to play this game would be the Cincinnati passing game. Um, so that's pretty much it. Let's uh, quickly go over, you know, stacks again, I suppose. Probably nothing from the Rams. I really don't want much from New Orleans either. Uh, do like both sides here in the Detroit Giants game. Think you can get to some dimes pieces, um, you know, with some Wandale uh, or some Darius Slayton, and certainly with Saquon. And on the other side, Goff and Amon Ross St. Brown, pretty good plays. Um, like Buffalo offense a lot here, and. On the run back, you can run it back with like a DPJ or, or somebody that's just going to get volume. I think Amari is okay. Um, really not a very good spot for the running game, though. <clears throat> um, Baltimore and Carolina, gotta, like, you have to like Baltimore, especially their offense with Mark Andrews likely to be back. Uh, 6,800 for Mark Andrews. He's going to be, you'll probably lead the way ownership wise uh, in the tight end room this week. I um, think it's a perfectly fine play, but be careful that. You know, Baltimore may be laying kind of a sneaky high number. I think Carolina could kind of compete there. we got to be careful, though. Um, they're going to be with Baker Mayfield instead of P.J. Walker. So, uh, and, and we kind of know that Baker doesn't have all that much upside. Um, so probably not much in the way of Carolina offense here, but it's going to be DA, D.J. Moore and Deontay Foreman uh, if it comes. So um, don't forget Kenyon Drake for Baltimore either. Pretty good play. Uh, Philly as well in the same same kind of boat as Buffalo, like their offense also. Uh, JT and um, maybe some Alec Pierce, I think are okay plays. Uh, Michael Pittman, you can keep in like, you can keep these guys in the pool. You're probably not going to get a lot of them, but this could be you know Philly could put up some points in a hurry here, and Indy could be forced to throw the ball. So something to keep in mind. Chicago and Atlanta likely going to be one of the chalkier spots of the day. Um, you can play Fields again. You can play Mariota on the other side. I prefer Mariota getting to maybe like some Cordero Patterson and some Drake London teams or some Kyle Pitts teams uh, with him. Uh, prefer Fields naked most often, but um, definitely you could playable with uh, a Cole Komet or a Darnell Mooney. I think those are fine plays also. Uh, Jets, New England, mostly just a run game and the defenses here for me, uh, and mostly just the defenses. I think it's... Uh, you know, two pretty good defenses here. So uh, this could be a very, very low scoring game and not a lot of fantasy points to go around. Uh, Washington to Houston, um, probably not much or anything from the Houston side for me um, outside of some Damian Pierce. I mean, he's just getting most of the volume. Maybe, maybe, maybe some Nico Collins or, or Brandon Cooks teams. Pretty unlikely for me, though. Uh, Washington on the other side, do like um, some Brian Robinson. Uh, like that a, a pretty decent bit. And, of course, Terry McLaurin. Um, you could also play a 
kind of a, I don't want to call it contrarian, but you could play something like um, a Terry McLaurin, uh, Robinson, Taylor Heineke type of team, run it back with a Nico or a Damian Pierce or, uh, you know, something like that. You know, so there's some interesting ways to play this game here. Uh, Vegas and Denver, favorite way to play this is is Denver stacks. Um, once again, and I'm probably going to step on this landmine once again, um, and run it back with uh, a Josh Jacobs or a Devonta. Uh, Dallas passing game down here for me. Really like this spot as well. Getting to CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, and even some Noah Brown. I think that's playable also. Um, probably staying off of Tony Pollard this week in a much tougher matchup for the run game. On the other side, do like the run game for Dalvin. Like Hawkinson as well. And I think the Vikings uh, are playable once again. But um, you know, And you can always, of course, play uh, Cousins and Justin Jefferson. And in the last game, once again, Cincy, for me, prefer the passing game. Less enthused about the running game, but Joe Mixon, they'll use him in the passing game. 7400 I think that's a perfectly playable price tag still. Um, and then you can run it back with one piece, like a Najee maybe, if you get to most of the passing game, uh, or a Deontay or something like that from Pittsburgh. So that's it for the early look, guys. I know it's... Um, once again, a, a really kind of a long one, but I think that's probably how we'll go about it maybe the rest of the season. And then once Bobby and I get to it, uh, to our review uh, later on in the week, we'll, we'll condense things a little bit more as we've had a, a chance or a couple of days to look through the ownership and all of the projections and everything. So um, all of this stuff is uploaded on the site already. Um, should be available in Sabersim and keep an eye out over the next several days as more injury news rolls in, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we will be updating these as often as possible. So that's it for now, guys. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll catch you later on in the week uh, with the review with Bobby.